Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to get into an essential element in the alchemy of all this stuff, and that is the quality of raising the spirit. And this is something that permeates uh, a lot of the literature and teachings of, of Taiji and related topics. And it's something which is, you know, the, the arrow points in that direction. In other words, the things are, all the stuff we're doing kind of moves in the direction of raising the spirit. So to clarify exactly what that means, uh, I'd like to you know, get into the, the that, and we're going to get into some stuff that may help with the, um, with that process. So for years, I kind of, you know, tried to get my, wrap my hand or my, my mind around the, uh, around the concept because I understood spirit as a, as a kind of a abstract quality, but I didn't know exactly what was meant in this context. What does it mean in, in Taiji to raise the spirit? So, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing about it recently and and like to uh, kind of share some of the insights that I've come across with that. And, you know, to start with like a simple definition of spirit, because there's like, you know, it goes all over the place and depending on the context that it's being used. But the, probably the most uh, general one, the one that pops up first on most definitions, it's it's the quality that animates living creatures. So the that which separates alive from dead. And so the uh, the uh, and has uh, an immaterial quality. So it's not matter. And so the uh, so that's that's the understanding that permeates a lot of the uh, you know uh, most of the definitions of it. Um, so you have a lot of different types of of spirit. You know, you talk about team spirit, or you talk about the Holy Spirit, and there's lots of different uses. But that one, we if we can kind of orient to that, a lot of the stuff makes sense that we talk about that. And as um, um, Miracle Max explained in The Princess Bride, that all dead is different from partly dead, mostly dead. And, and then he goes on to explain that, and if something is only mostly dead, then it means it's partly alive. And I think this uh, kind of really gets to the core of it there, because we're saying that there are there is a spectrum of aliveness that we have, and we have. It's not a binary thing, alive and dead. It's like, how alive are you? And this is where we get into when we talk about raising the spirit. It's like, how much aliveness, how much liveliness can you bring into the present moment? And that is what I believe is being discussed when we're talking about raising the spirit. That is where we are creating more aliveness and then we're raising it physically in the body so that it is felt in the brain. And uh, so this is fits in with uh, a lot of the Taoist literature and uh, you know the they talk about the Ni Wan Gong, which is the the muddy pill or mud pill palace. And that's the mud pill was was a nickname for the pineal gland. And the mud pill palace was the spot in the in the brain and the center of the brain, which included the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, and also the uh, uh, the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that that is the interface between the nervous system and the endocrine system. So the pituitary gland is the master gland and it controls all the endocrines in the in the whole body. The pineal gland is primarily in charge with uh, with uh, regulating light and uh, issuing the the melatonin the um, uh, the hormone that governs our sleep cycle. 
and so we had this these things here. So the and the uh, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are part of what's called the um, HPA, the uh, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And the adrenals are very body, eye of flesh kind of kind of hormones, which are primarily the guardians of the system. They they are they are activate they activate the the stress response. They activate the the functions that protect us. Whereas the pituitary controls everything else and keeps the homeostasis of the whole system going. So the and the hypothalamus regulates the information that the nervous system feeds into this so that we can get this this axis. So that means that they these two poles are the pituitary and the uh, and the adrenals and they determine how much of it is uh, uh, a whole a holistic unified approach versus the determined uh, stress response kind of, of approach anyway so these this is happening right there in that that Niwon gong the the uh, mud pill palace so bringing up your chi to your brain, if you if it can pass through the jade pillow gate, and that's a, that's a big if because you know, as we've discussed often here, it's you know that if you're kinking the hose, then you get this the energy is not feeding into the brain, and since the brain is using about twenty percent of your resources, your chi, your blood, your oxygen. Every moment, waking or sleeping, then if you are kinking the hose there, then you're starving the brain. It doesn't have enough energy to function at a high level. So one of the things that these these guys who were, you know, going back centuries, they were able to observe that whenever you open the jade pillow gate, whenever you feed the niwan gong that things work better. Not only that, but whenever the brain goes into a state of whole brain coherence, then you access awarenesses which are not available to you in your normal state. You start to have experiences that we would call spiritual experiences because we're moving outside of the just the survival parts of our, our awareness and into something which we're able to attune to the environment in a way that is extraordinary. That is, we are able to go beyond the limitations of our five senses and our rational thinking and open up into something much, much bigger. And this is what I've referred to many times in these talks about the eye of spirit. That is, the, the perceptions, the awarenesses that are beyond the ordinary. And they range also on a spectrum, you know, from something very something very simple as uh, like just having a hunch or an intuition about something, just having a, a fe the sense of, uh, oh, there's someone else in the room or there's things like that where, where you're going, you're able to perceive something which is, you, you shouldn't, have that sense you know that and then going all the way to the end of the spectrum where you're having moments of you know cosmic consciousness and and uh and full-blown mystical experiences and all local stops in between so in order to raise the the um raise the spirit to allow the chi to ascend in your body, moving up through the jade pillow gate and into your brain, into the that central control panel that you've got there in your brain. It, we, there's a, an important formula that is that it's written about and not talked about too much, but uh, it's, it, 
the the Chinese for it is Shuling Ding Jin, and um, I'll uh, I'll write it in the in the notes to the uh, to the 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 tape on video on on YouTube. But Shu Ling Ding Jin roughly translates, and there's lots of different translations for it. But roughly translates, if you get your head and your neck in the correct position, the spirit will and the spiritual energy will ascend. And that's you know that's a real kind of uh, bare bones kind of explanation for it. But another way of saying it is that there is a an insubstantial energy that lifts the crown of the head and allows the uh, allows the spirit to rise so that's another way of talking about it and so we're getting a a, a message here that is really crucial particularly in times and i've spoken about this a, a bit recently you know particularly in times where it's kind of become epidemic to have uh, what doctors are now calling computer neck which is you're you're looking over your computer and you're you're reaching forward with your chin and what that does is it puts a huge load on your neck and the you know the math on it is that if you extend your neck out at a 45 degree angle there is about it takes about 50 pounds of muscular force to support the 8 to 12 pounds of mass that you got there on 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 top of your body so uh it if you habitually have your neck craned forward you know even a little bit there is requires a lot of work from your neck muscles to to make that happen plus there's a tendency to kink the hose there at the jade pillow gate which then creates this dammed up effect and I noticed it myself going back like 30 years whenever I was getting these headaches all the time. And I finally figured out that it was, you know, that was what was causing me to uh, to get these headaches. And once I started to uh, adjust my head position, the headaches disappeared and have not come back. So uh, the headaches were just a cannon shot across my bow to say, hey, Rick, you know, you're doing something wrong here. You might want to might want to mend your ways so that we can proceed in an orderly fashion here at a, at a much, much better uh, state of being. And whenever I started to get that, I started to correct that. That's not to say that I don't have to make that adjustment every day, many times a day, because I do. It's something that... Uh, we gravity and habits tend to to pull down on the head and and so it requires an effort an intentional um decision to get your head on straight and if you don't make that decision then you're probably just going to slide into into that uh uh, uh, your default setting. So getting this, so the Shuling Ding Jin means that the crown of the head, and you've heard me talk about this many times, the crown of the head right here at the, at the hair, hair whirl is raising up. And so you notice that when you do that, it, the occiput, instead of angling back, it then moves toward vertical. And this is something that Cheng Man Ching really emphasized and said, like, you know, you have to get your occiput toward the vertical to allow the qi and the shen to rise. And what, what you'll notice is that the top of the head tends to kind of slope down a little bit whenever whenever you raise the, the occiput. Also the chin tucks in and that opens up that jade pillow gate and you get this the energy that has been built up in your body mind is a lot allowed to flow freely so what you're what you're not doing is 
forcing this, not saying, okay, I'm going to hold my head like this and keep it rigid. It's like, no, you just want to just gently ah, allow it to settle in so that you can feel the structural support that is built into the system. This is, it's, it's a structurally efficient to have your, your head vertical, have your occiput tending toward the vertical. And that's not to say that you're ever gonna get it really, really vertical because we all have different shaped heads. So don't, we're not talking about getting this absolute ideal. We're talking about just moving in that direction so that by lifting the crown, not not the top of the head, but the crown back here, you are getting the occiput more vertical and you're opening up that, that jade pillow gate. Consequently, this allows the spirit to rise. And a caution on this because there is so much um, energy that comes through when you do this, particularly whenever you get it. It takes a little bit to get it right, but when you get it right, it's like, oh, it's like it can it can hit you. I did, I was doing a, a class. Maria and I were doing a class uh, last Friday, and I I was introducing it to uh, to a group of you know fairly um, uh, new people, and and one guy who had had some spinal some disc fusion in his neck he did it and boom he he felt like a sack of potatoes on the uh, on the ground because so much came in that his blood pressure just dropped and he was like he uh, he, he 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 dropped down so we had to kind of set him secure him uh, on a bench and so he could you know stabilize his his stuff but so you have to be aware of too much because it is, it is very nourishing, and sometimes you can you can get too much too fast if you are not prepared for it. You know, your brain says, "Oh, we do not recognize this phenomenon. We're going to shut down now," and so you want to uh, you want to build up to it. And that, luckily for most of us, you do, you just do it, and it has its own self regulating system. You. You're not going to do it more than you want because it'll get uncomfortable. You'll get lightheaded if too much chi is going into your brain. And you build up to it gradually so that your brain can then understand this raised spirit and can adapt to that and say, oh, okay, I like this. I, I, I want, I like more liveliness i like more aliveness and uh and then it has this capacity to then nourish the the brain cells and it has a demonstrable effect on your your mental acumen your your endocrine system your your just your whole sense of vitality and and youthful vigor so that is the uh, the nickel version of what uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, before we go on, um, any questions or comments? All good. Okay. Full speed ahead. All right. All right. Here we go. So, we're, first we're going to do this just sitting down, and just so we can get used to the idea. So it's. We're really fine tuning the the uh, this Shu Ling Ding Jin. So that is, you want to get your head and tune into where it's doing you the most good. So you know, just get that idea. You know, that crown of the head back here. So put your hand there and. I just feel that even if you've done this a thousand times for me, just kind of just get that feeling there and then get down here and put your finger right there at that at that jade pillow gate where your your spine enters into your occiput. So just to clarify, 
occiput is this big bone right here at the uh, at the base of the skull. So, and first, just deliberately slack off and just kind of let your head kind of kind of hang as you know where it might want to go ordinarily. Just so, just kind of let it let it relax and 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 just kind of be there. Just just feel into that. And then very gently, very slowly, back to reach with the crown of the head and tuck in the chin and feel your neck elongating. Feel your occiput getting more vertical. And just notice the effect that has on your state of being, how it, the effect it has on your mind, on your just your energy, your feeling. You just get that. And then very gently lift your chin, not far, but just like a half inch or something, and just notice what that does. Now lower it. A half an inch and notice what that does. Notice, notice, lower it just a little bit more and notice what that does. Lift it and just feel. So this is a very subjective experience here. This is something, you know, we're talking about how you feel. This is your relationship with your body mind, your relationship with your chi. Now drop your chin and you're looking for the sweet spot. So up and down, just kind of do a little bottle head there very gently and just feel into that. And there's a, there's a sweet spot there, which just says, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I like this. Just get that. Good. Now, we'll do the, uh, what, what we call the, the turkey head. That is, you're going to push your face forward. And just feel, I'll do it to the side here. So I'm pushing my face forward. And notice how that kinks the hose there. And it creates a, uh, and my my neck is an angle now, and now I'm going to drop it back, pull it back, and take it past the point where it feels comfortable. And really, just elongating the neck, and then push the face forward. So we're exploring the range of motion here, and pull it back. You can feel the muscles kind of stretching, the connective tissue elongating. You're creating space there in the neck. Now, find your sweet spot there. Go forward a little bit, and then back it up, and then forward a little bit. And you're looking for that place that it feels, feels right. You're still reaching with the crown. And just notice how it makes you feel to have your head on straight. And it's good to be able to compare it to other things, just so you have that, just so you'll notice whenever it's, it's off. Because once you start to move, you got to start this all over again. You got to start to make that adjustment again, because Things have changed. You have habits that have been building up over many decades that are cued by certain movements, certain body positions. And you'll automatically, I know I do, you know, particularly if I say I'm learning a, uh, a new form or something like that, I'm doing something I haven't done before, I'll have a tendency to stick my chin out 
It just it's something that is my pre-conscious thinks that that's a swell idea to do that. But then once I oh once I get a grip, I pull back and I say oh, it works better if I don't do that. This is where my my conscious mind has been able to learn some cool stuff so that I'm able to make corrections in my pre-conscious and over time it becomes easier and easier to make those first of all establish the awareness of when it's not working and second to be able to make a very quick and efficient change to to adjust that so we've got this now so we we have an idea now where the head wants to be and you get to explore this for decades. You don't you don't have to get it all in one shot. It's something that every time you go there, every time you consciously reach with the crown of the head, Shu Ling Ding Jin, you get this little burst of spirit. Shen is raising and it's animating your Niwan Gong, your Muddy Pill Palace, and it is creating new possibilities in your in your body mind, so much so that you actually start to create new life in your in your in your in your system. So it, you are more alive as you the more you explore this. You become more in present time because as the spirit rises and if it's done in a coherent way, then your whole system works together as a unit. So you have this sense of coherence that allows you to function at this much higher level.